In this movie, our second in the one of working with Shadows in Anime Studio Pro, we'll take a look at some of the automatic shadow features that anime comes with, but then some unique and interesting ways to uh, engage them that have nothing to do with shadows. Additionally, we'll look at some other tools we've become exposed to and see how to apply them to an object as we work in the scene here. Fundamentally, the shadows that come with Anime Studio Pro super easy to get engaged. We saw this a little bit in the last movie. I've got a square on layer one. We'll open our layer options for that and under shadows we have two. In the preceding movie we had layer shading which allowed for our circle to have a nice soft shadow to it. But fundamentally layer shadows by themselves. It comes with the default. It's set at a certain angle and we can change that. I'll select OK. Nothing appears in the scene. This is a rendered effect so we'll do a quick render and we can see our shadow. It has the effect of floating the object off the surface or the background. Very easy to do. It'll follow the shape around. If the shape changes size, so does the shadow. Very nice and easy. Well, let's look at some ways to use these in some surprising fashions. I'm going to go ahead and delete this object right here. And we'll import a file that is in the Working Files projects. Come down to Adobe Illustrator file. And where you want to go is the 08 special effects section, Shadow and Elf. This is a file obviously created in Adobe Illustrator that we'll go ahead and bring into our scene right here. Very basic, if I render it out right now, we can see that, well, yep, it's a floating elf head. That's it pretty much. Well, let's look at ways that we can use shadows to enhance that. And actually, I probably got rid of that render just a little too fast. Nothing looks so... Uh, boring really is to have line weights on your animations all the same. Now we've got some issues because this is importing from Illustrator that we'll fix shortly. But right now I want to show how we're going to use a D shadow function to really give us a nice heavy outline which is fairly standard in many types of cartooning style. I'll close that with the elf layer selected. We'll go ahead and open the options. We'll go directly to shadows. And now for shadow on, I'm going to change a couple things. The offset, how far away from the object it sets, I'm going to change to zero. And I'll have to point something out here. The shadow tool right now, it's aimed at 315 degrees. This is kind of a schizophrenic tool in anime because in some of the functions, you control where the light is coming from. And in this function, you actually show what direction from the object the shadow is. So in one case, it's like the sunshine. In the other case, it's like the shadow. So it doesn't perform consistently as it does in some other programs you might be familiar with, like Adobe Photoshop. So right now, it's set to an angle of 315 degrees. We saw that with the square. The shadow was low and to the right. But I'm changing the offset to zero right now. I'm going to go ahead and change the blur to zero. And I'm going to go ahead and expand this to something more like 5. What this will do now is obviously not change anything right there. But when I go ahead and do an area render, we'll see that we now have a heavier line around our object. Now this is looking gray for a reason that we'll go take a look at here real quickly. I'll open the layer options for the elf, shadows. Right here under shadow color, you might think that this is a basic gray. Well, it's not actually. Over here we can see the target down in the lower left hand corner. It's pure black, but instead of changing the opacity of the layer like we did in the last movie for a little shadow trick, right here we're working with an alpha channel. And you'll notice a value of 128. And you might think, well, isn't the, the, shouldn't the value be simply 0 for none and 100 for completely on? And no, it's not. In this case, the alpha levels or how many layers of opacity you've got is equal to 255 just like working with the red green or blue channels you've got 0 to 255 in this case 255 is going to be solid black if I select OK and actually if we reduce our expansion to something more like 3 select OK and do a quick render we wind up now with a very nice line weight change going around the perimeter of our object. Now, if we've got a character built in layers, which is usually the best way to do that, you can have some very nice, easy ways to help segment and separate arms from torsos using some of these outline features. Let's go ahead and close this. I'll use a couple quick tools to uh, dress up our character a little bit, and then we'll use the shadow tool in a different function here. 
pressing the keyboard shortcut G, or actually T, I'm going to select points. We're going to drag them in. In Illustrator, if you open the Illustrator file, this is actually an open object. And we know that Anime Studio Pro won't let you fill an open object with color. So that closes them automatically. What we'll do now is hide these edges by pressing the keyboard shortcut H for the hide function. We'll hide several of these. This, this back line on the ear I didn't really want. Also, I want to change some of the line weight of some of these lines just for a little more visual interest. I'll select some points and increase those. If I select the entire face right here, for example, keyboard shortcut Q, or actually I use G and we'll double click and select the whole thing. Command D on the Macintosh, Control D will give me my random width dialog. We could play and tune this up and, and make some thick and thins happen like that with this tool that we've started to explore. But what if we wanted this elf head to be glowing against a background? Well, that's another place where we use the shadows. Let's come up to File, Project Settings, Background Color. I'm going to go ahead and just turn it all the way to black in our color picker and select OK. Now in the elf layer, I'll leave some of our shadow settings the same that we used for the heavy outline. However, this time, instead of the shadow color being black, I want it to be something more glow-like, uh, maybe elf-like, a light green. We'll bring that over here, select OK. But this time for the blur, I'll leave the offset at zero. Let's send the blur up to something like 20, and I'll select OK. Now when we render our object, we can see that our elf head is floating against the background with a magical glow around it. Very easy, fast way to use some of the tools in Anime Studio Pro.